When historians sift through the debris of modern society, it will be hard to miss 50 million Sony Walkmans. On its 10th birthday, a monument was unveiled to celebrate its success in transforming the listening habits of people around the world. One brilliant idea has spawned a further 150 million imitation personal stereos. But it is the Sony Walkman which has become a design classic. I'm often asked whether this is a Japanese or, or a Western product, and it's a measure of Sony's achievement in getting machines like this around the globe, creating a new type of object that, and I take no pleasure from saying this, I'm just acknowledging reality, is that nowadays anything as beautifully detailed, as small and as well made as this could come from nowhere other than Japan. They have the production process so completely organized and so slick. They didn't, I mean, there's this myth that the Japanese copied. They didn't copy. For 30 years after the last war, they invested all the money they had available for industry into production technology. And that's why creativity in Japan actually comes out of the factory floor. I mean, they can make anything. They can make any number of Walkmans now. And so the roots of the creativity really are not only in traditional culture, but in the means of production. There's nothing particularly remarkable about the idea of a tape player that doesn't record. But the secret behind the success of the Walkman has roots deep in the Japanese psyche, with a history stretching back over a thousand years. Yeah, no, まあ、で、え、the man behind the Walkman is Akio Morita, the 15th generation heir of a sake brewing business, now chairman of Columbia Pictures, CBS Records, and the Sony for Economic Miracle. And in Tokyo, he's known as the samurai of the transistor. Through his revolutionary understanding of consumer psychology and product design, Morita and Sony have almost single-handedly transformed the jumble sale image of Japanese electronics into one of prestige and mystique. It was under the American occupation of post-war Japan that the infant Sony company first began. With a loan of $200 from his father, Morita's dream was to use the breakthroughs made in military communications equipment as the basis for a new business. In August 19, that's uh, 45, I was working as an engineering uh, officer in the Navy Naval Laboratory. And I got the news. We, in Hiroshima, atomic bomb exploded. You know, as a scientist, I thought 
it took uh, 20 years. And really, atomic bomb exploded. That means how much difference technology we had between our country and United States. So even our company was small, we put all our effort to create something new, something different from other. That's the origin of our company, our business. I started the business with Mr. Ibuka, who is also an electronic engineer. So when we are working on development of tape recorder, we had a big dream. When we complete tape recorder, we could make a fortune. Marita came across an extraordinary document published by the Civil Information and Educational Service of the US Occupation Force. It's called 999 Uses for a Tape Recorder. It's inspiring because it was, an, to a large extent, the stimulus for the whole creation of the Sony story. Reading it is quite a revelation. I mean, here are some of the things you can actually do with a tape recorder. Traveling salesman can use it for recorded reports, correspondence, interviews, and credit references. But my favorite of all is uh, what you can do in the pet shop with the tape recorder. Attention getting storefront sounds, including lion's roar, generic animal noise, monkey chatter, and talking parrots. Tape recorder, for us, great innovation. But for the other people, it looks like a toy. So without educating our customer how much value our product has, we cannot sell our product. We move around in the country, visiting school, or the village, and demonstrate our machine, and uh, teaching people how useful this tape recorder is. In the race to develop new and exciting products, miniaturization became a fundamental part of Sony corporate policy. But this required the latest technology, and the turning point in the company's history came when they heard about an American invention, the transistor. It was on the trip to America when Morita and Ibuka discovered Western Electric's transistor patents, and it's interesting that the Americans who actually patented the transistor, so one of them went on record as saying there are no commercial applications for this device. It could only be used in research or in medical circumstances. So Ibuka had the sense to see, hmm, transistor, we can do something with this. And Morita had, um, knew exactly what you could do with this. You could once again make a product no one felt they um, ever needed. In this case, the portable radio in mean, the TR-55. Right from the start, Sony's been one of the most progressive companies in Japan in the sense that they've integrated from the beginning their technology, their thinking, and their design. They haven't applied design to the surface as perhaps some of the other companies did in the early years. The little transistor radios they manufactured in the 50s, again, were about portability, about being able to, a teenager, for example, taking their um, little radio upstairs and listening to pop music in the privacy of their bedroom. Um, that couldn't be done with the great heavy pieces of furniture that radio used to be. So that kind of stepping forward into, into a new behavior is conceptual, and then the product follows. We created small radio. We named that a pocketable radio. And we try to show that radio fit Shah's pocket. But we try to make as small as possible, but I found that radio is a little bit bigger than the standard shirt. So we ordered special shirts which has a little bigger pocket, and we gave this shirt to all the salesmen, and the salesman put our radio in the shirt's pocket and show that the customer See, this is a pocket of radio. Pocket radios were an instant hit, and young people didn't seem to care that the earplugs looked like deaf aids. But during the 70s, a new fashion began with street music and the ghetto blaster. You know, I have uh, three children, two boys and one girl. And when, when I see them, they are always uh, have, uh, having uh, music. When they walk, they carry the music still. When they are home, they are turning big sound at their home. 
And when we on ride a car, they turn on the stereo all the time. But when they get off the car, they have, uh, they have to carry the big machine, the shoulder, and it's noisy and heavy. So I thought if we got some machine to give a good stereo while people are walking, maybe that's a good idea because I found youngster cannot live without music. それ前にこれはテープレコーダーと言ったんですねテーププレイヤーっていう言葉はなかったんですよですね録音のできない機械なんて売れるわけがないと思ってたんですねところがこれは再生の機械として作っていますと非常にいい音がするとどこでもでこれはその音楽が聴けるんだとしかも歩きながら何でもできるっていうことはですねこれは画期的なことだったんですねしかしソニーは本当にとそれは分からなかった売り出してみて初めて分かったんですねしかも最初は売れなかったんですからこれが売れ,売れ始めたっていうのはこれを発売してから3ヶ月後だったんですねだからそういう意味ではこれは我々が計画して非常に詳細なプランのもとにやったもんではなくてやってみたら売れたんだというのが本当にと真相だと思うんですね。There are a lot of you know, benign myths going around. I mean, one story has it that Marita's children were playing you know,、uh, loud rock music and there's a reason for it. Containing that Marita himself sometimes says that he wanted to listen to music while playing tennis. Another story goes that Mazadu Ibuka wanted to have better quality sound while、um, you know, traveling on the airlines. But I think the real reason is this in about 1978, the immensely profitable radio cassette machines were separated from the tape recorder division of Sony and were put into the radio division. Japanese companies have Often organized in divisions which compete ferociously, and the pride and honor of the tape recorder division depended on them coming up with a new product, and that was the Walkman. You are witnessing the ultimate miniaturization of the cassette player, the creation of microcircuitry, the smallest motor of its kind, the reinvention of the wheel. You are witnessing the birth of the Super Walkman from Sony. Never has so much genius been coaxed into so little space. Wherever you look in Japan, there's an intense desire to make things smaller. I mean, it's no mistake that the Japanese, are, as far as I know, it's the only culture which has a, a poetic form which is restricted to 17 syllables, I meaning the haiku. And the sort of haiku mentality goes throughout Japan. They have competitions there for people who can actually write. Characters of the alphabet on sesame seeds and grains of rice. I mean, there's someone who's actually managed to attain 160 characters on a sesame seed. There's an obsession, if you like, in, within Japanese culture to make things small, not just for the sake of it, but because that has a lot of, of spiritual, aesthetic, and, and moral overtones connected with、um, Buddhist religions, with the conquest of nature. Um, with the conquest of technology, if you like, as a, a kind of extension of that, and the ne- need to sort of be ingenious, the need to actually control the objects, the environment. Walkman, にしてもね、家電製品などというものは、実は大変なバークリーの日本の伝統が中に染みているんです。例えば、今皆さんご覧になられているこの。幕の内弁当なんですけどこれは本当にもう華やかでたくさんの,そのおかずがこの中にありますでつまり日本民族っていうのは欲が深い民族なんでしょうねおごしそう一面でたくさんいただきたいとたくさんの種類のを食べたいとだだってそれをどうやって、えー、上手にその箱の中に収めたらいいかということで長いこと考えてそこに一つの、まあ、美意識を見出したんですねで、えーたいよく私たちもあの旅行しますときにこれがあの幕の内弁当が出てくるんですこんな綺麗な他に非常に単純にこう収められているんですそれで、まあ、お客様がこう見てあどんなのかなと思ってこの蓋をこう開けますとびっくりするような景色が目の前にこう展開されるわけですねこのウォークマンというのは体の中にこう入れたいですねそしてそのあちこち自由に持ち歩きたいということですつまりえー、このウォークマンの中にはまあーテープが入ってそれで操作しさまざまな操作ができるということですそして、えー、持ち運びが簡単であるとでかつまた情報がたくさん入ってるわけですねでそういう面では、えー、この、え
幕の内弁当もたくさんの情報が入っているとそして、えー、この、えー、お弁当も、えー、持ち運びが非常にその簡単であると。ね、それ置くのも簡単であるとそういう面でつながっておりますでしたがって、えー、このオークマンの心、まあ、たまたまこれ四角くなっておりますけれど本当にもう、えー、まさに、えー、同じ心がここに通っていると The Japanese have a profound understanding of the principle of reductionism It lies at the heart of their culture from bonsai trees to miniature rock gardens Reductionism became a way of life 2,000 years ago with the introduction of a rice agriculture from the continent. This forced a previously nomadic people to move to the small fertile plains that lie between the mountains and the sea. This constraint has had an enduring effect on the Japanese consciousness. Since then, an economy in the use of space has become both a necessity and a virtue. It is no accident that today the Japanese have surpassed the rest of the world in making intricately crafted high-tech products from microchips to cameras and Walkmans. The big power of the bonsai is the same as the bonsai. The nature of the nature and the nature of the nature is the same as the nature. なっているというのは大きなものも同じ力小さいものを持っていると小さいけど大きなものと同じ力があるとスモールバッドパワフルというようなね小さいけど力があるとそういうのがあの盆栽の良さなんですよね、えー、例えば大きな電力会社電力の工場ありますって買えのそれこんなぐらいの電力工場ができてしかもそれだけの電力が出てくるとしたならばこれ素晴らしいことじゃないだろうかというようなそういう,こう夢がこうあってその夢が、えー、いろんな製品ウォークマンでもそうですしそれからカメラでもそうですしまたこれはたまたま、ね、私のデザインした、えー、CD カセットの、えー、プレイヤーですけどこれはとっても小さいんですけれどすごくその、えー、低音も非常に強いあのいい音が出ますしこれだけの小さなものですけれど。もう本当に大きな装置とはあんまり変わらないぐらいの力を持っているという、まあ、そういうところに今盆栽の面白みそれから、えー、幕の内弁当の、えー、あのなんていうんですかねその良さというのが発揮されているんじゃないかというふうに思っています It's not just compactness that makes the Walkman so seductive In transforming a plain box into a highly desirable personal possession Sony's designers have paid great attention to detail and presentation And there are interesting echoes of Japan's rich artistic traditions. The Irotians are Nihon de la Mukashkara Amari Disney, Taksana Iro, Tskawanaka Takeva, Kurotoka, Shirotoka, Akatoka, so you tangent my roads cout. Dagara, Varena Zaini, Kropoimon go eat on a summer say on this, eh? So regardless, Iro de Kinima. So to most of times, Nihon a Tatami Matotoka, Shoji Toka, Fusmatoka, so to mean like a chok sendus, eh? Straight line the Arak, eh? ね、だからルイージ・コラーニさんみたいな三次曲線の方がなかなか得意ではないとだからその意味で製品というのはどうしてもこういった直線になってくると例えばこれは一番最初のウォークマンなんですけれどもみんながこういった直線なんですねしかしこれだけではまずいだろうということで最近はちょっとこういったその少し膨らんでるとかこういったことを加えてきましたけれどもしかしそれにしても基本はそういうことでまず直線があって単純な色があってそれから小さくをつくということがやっぱり日本人の一番のやっぱりそのデザインの根幹といいますかデザインの元になっているというかそれは言えるような気がいたします。Touch upon actually feeling objects. You have to hold the thing and roll it in your hands before you drink tea from it. So you're actually sort of engaging with it physically. And there's a very strong sense of, of the way in which touch is part of the, the Japanese aesthetic. It's not just visual. And we tend to dominate our senses by the visual, they do much less so. And so that way of having a, a sort of reverence for an object. Not in any kind of materialistic way, but much more because the object means certain things. It means control over nature, it means other spiritual things. 
So the object is central. The object is there and you relate to it and ritual enhances that relationship with it. And that sense of the object moves right through to the, the Walkman so that listening to music is another kind of ritual in which the object is central. That reverence for objects and the marvellous approach to detail makes design and marketing relatively easy for Japanese companies because everybody is attracted by the... You don't have to be Japanese to be attracted to these things. There's a sort of... These things really inspire cupidity, whether you want to own a Walkman or not. There are very few people who don't want to touch and feel and... You know, it inspires the desire to own. And there's something which, once again, goes back to the sort of roots of Japanese culture in this. There are Zen terms for the sort of tape recorderness of a tape recorder. Jan Soli is brilliant at doing that. And designer, you know, this is, you know, everyone is given to the consumer, and you're 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 given ウォークマンは従来、まあ、10年経つんですけれどもこのカセットテープを包み込む形としてこの四角い形でこの10年間来ましたしかしあの90年代の形をどのように探っていくかということであの、まあ、この四角から例えばこういったような丸型のフォルムこういうスタイルに展開できないかと。なんかまあよく出てますけど何も全部カセットをね包み込まなくてもいいかなっていう感じもしてやっぱりだいぶ大きくなっちゃうかなっていうのがあって、うんまあ、こういった四角いタイプですとこういった角角がありますね、うんええまあ、ポケットに入れたとしても、まあ、こういったところが出っ張ってしまうと、うん、これを、まあ、少しでも、まあ、メーカーを起こしながらこういったコーナーを取ることによってよりその人間の体にフィットするといいますかそういったフィットネスをキーワードにして次のウォークマンを提案していきたいと。It's a mystery in a way, isn't it? Why do they need to produce 170 different models? I suppose the main explanation is commercial. You've got to keep selling things, and then only so many people will buy a, a minimal object. You've got to revamp it. Having said that, how do you make a lifestyle object? Well, certainly the Walkman is a sort of perfect vessel for doing that, if you like, because it's nothing. It's a very small little box, initially made of metal. But if you want to then align it to other people's lifestyles, you just simply take your box and model it or style it in line with something that's evocative or associative. And so the woman's pale, pastel-colored one looks like something on her dressing table. The one with a shiny chrome surface looks like a piece of metal equipment you might have on a kitchen surface. It's a simple formula in which you kind of evoke something else in your product to make it appeal to the person who's got that something else. Walkman is not just a fashion item. For many Japanese, it's a polite but indispensable tool for tackling the stress of commuting life. ま、前に置いて隣の人との関係を絶ったり、あるいはカバンを前に置いて隣の人との関係を絶ったりするととても似ていると僕は思います。それはウォークマンをかけることによって自分の内側を音でいっぱいにして、そしてそれは意味からす
that like to teach the world to sing 1960s and 1970s. I mean, the 1980s is really rather different. I mean, people, you know, wanted to make money and wanted to, you know, obsessive vanity and commodity fetishism. And the Walkman is really a sort of sod you machine, isn't it? I've got my music and I don't care. Well, mashed potatoes and beans are my favorite. So we're right in the middle of dinner now. Uh, it's pretty, tension here is pretty weird. Andy Warhol is wearing a pair of headphones, which he brought with him and hasn't taken off since he sat down. William Burroughs is looking fairly relaxed. He's wearing a beautiful pearl gray suit, and Warhol is telling him that he is the best dressed man in New York, and he admires his look more than anyone else's. Oh, tell Henry to come. Tell him it's re really fun. I'd hate to think of someone who'd been wearing one, say, for 10 years. What had happened? You know, what would have happened to their brain? Had it had developed in any way? And it's a bit like drink, I think. I mean, if you drink heavily, you can cut people off too, and you cut them out, and you can walk around going, wow, everything's terrific, and you feel great. You know, and it's the same sort of thing. So it's being high, I suppose, than anything. Because they do make you high. And if you've worn them for any length of time and take them off, you don't just take them off and you stop listening to it as you turn off a radio. I mean, you're, you're out of your brain anyway for about 20 minutes or longer. At a period in your life, I guess, uh, there are times where you don't want to know about anybody, hear anybody, or anybody droning onto you or talking to you in any way which is middle-aged or boring. So you cut them off. And so there seems to be some point in life when, in fact, you can't wear a Walkman anymore. Or some part in your life when you say, oh, OK, hello world, here I am, I'm prepared to listen to you, I'm prepared to listen to the person next door to me on the train, underground or whatever. One is irritated by them, but I think the people that wear them don't like you, and I think that's why they wear them, they're shutting you out, they don't want to hear you saying anything or boring them to death about anything. I mean, you can't talk to them. I mean, the thing is, nobody talks to anybody anyway on the underground, and if you do, you get arrested. But I mean, if you did get to talk to them and said, oh, excuse me, I think I'm feeling ill, or I may faint, they wouldn't hear you and they think you're mad and they don't want to be involved with other people. Well, I think there is a genuine nuisance there, particularly amongst those that are turned up rather loud and you get this irritating tinny sound, which is annoying to people nearby. There was a fair degree of discontent amongst other passengers um, and where there is a nuisance to other passengers, the matter is covered by a bylaw um, which means that somebody creating a nuisance, whether it's by a Walkman or a radio or whatever, is actually contravening the law of the land. And so we felt it was necessary to take some action. Where a machine is turned up very loud, it's irritating to even the most mild-mannered people. This has led to the odd incident now and again. I, I don't know whether it's good for the people or bad for the people, but but uh, at least we gave the people some joy of enjoying the music for himself. But the concept of Walkman will not be changed because this is a stereo, not a car stereo. Personal stereo will never, never disappear.